Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming here tonight. Uh, oh, she's sorry about the smell of cooking that came uh, from downstairs. The janitor decided to do a massive uh, fish cooking <laughs> <laughs> session, and uh, we had to suffer. So, uh, sorry about that. So, you're not offering us fish? I am. I think it's for us. I it's fine. Fine. <laughs> Friday, uh, and today we have a very, very nice uh, evening. We have uh, Nan Nader coming, who is the co-founder of Bodhidamna, uh, pretty much one of the most successful uh, uh, gaming apps coming out of Lebanon or the region. Basically a massive, massive success. Um, so not only will he be talking uh, about that story, he will also talk about the future <coughs> projects, future games, and very, very interesting things. And I think we'll be seeing uh, kind of snapshots or demos out of that. Um, just very quickly, uh, Sequence is an internet startup accelerator for those who don't know. And we basically promote internet startups. So we take them from idea to funding to team to product and so on and so forth. If you're interested in being an entrepreneur or you know people who are, let, get in touch with us and we'll be more happy to explain a bit more. But tonight is Ferdinand's night and the men's night. So without further ado, the dinner. Everyone, so you have to go and save them. 
Then in Qatar, all right, so we killed everybody, but one bird left to Qatar, so we go and follow him and then you know, start shooting there. So the story was really hectic because, again, we had full-time jobs. We couldn't have time to, to properly think about the game. Once you finalize the story, the most funny part of the game, actually, for me at least, is the, uh, the voices. We actually recorded our voices in our PCs, in our laptops. So it's like, all right, so put a pillow here, a pillow there for the echo. And we thought ourselves like, you know, we are a sound engineer or something. So this, let's do bat, 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 you know, and Arabic. <laughs> uh, doesn't sound right, repeat. So, you know, Arabic sounds bat, 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 you know. And then, it was really like this, so all the voices in the game uh, are just from our voices. Uh, then we recorded the music by the friend who's a very talented musician, so he just did the intro scene of the game. That was it, actually. The rest are from the internet, you know, the uh, when you shoot, uh, on the X-Bombs, you know, some uh, free things on the internet. But the main thing, the voices and the music were done from us in front of ours. Then we did some testing. But right, yeah, I forgot to mention that once we sketched the birds, we got the coder, who became our partner, uh, or should I say now our ex-partner, because each continued in a separate way. But we uh, all together found it, but, you know, only with three people. And then uh, when we got the music, it was the final touch of the game, we started testing. And then, you know, the, the game was launched. We launched it for uh, two dollars first. It did three downloads maybe in two months. And a lot of uh, uh, feedback from our friends, from people. Then we uh, started, all right, so what's the problem? We fixed the design, we fixed a little bit the gameplay, we added some features to take things out, put on other things. And then we launched it for free. We launched it for free. I, uh, I, I can't forget the... Uh, I can't forget the feeling. I was at work actually, and uh, I went and I saw that yesterday we downloaded 5,000 uh, copy. I said, "Wow, 5,000! Uh, you know, this weekend we we'll celebrate." So I went home, we were really excited, and couldn't sleep. And I woke up in the early morning. We checked what we did the day, uh, the day before. We were at 160,000 downloads the day before. So don't ask what happened. I'll try to explain, but I still don't know exactly what happened. So we finished the game. Now. We launch. How did we launch with really zero dollars in our pockets? I mean, if you have a hundred bucks in your pocket, you go drink for them for the weekend, but you will not advertise them. That's nothing. If you want to advertise a proper campaign, you have to pay thousands and thousands. We didn't have that kind of money. So our only thing was the social media business. We created a Twitter account, we created a Facebook uh, page, and then started connecting bloggers, people as, as equals who were uh, one of the first who wrote about us, then uh, Wanda, then Arabic Crunch. And those people, they created a small hype in the region. And everybody started talking, wow, well, there's a new game, it's not Angry Birds. I mean, some people said it's Angry Birds. Some people said uh, they speak Arabic. Some people said, look, the uh, bird has a taboo. It's, uh, it's really funny. So the, the, the word of mouth just started buzzing around without really knowing what is this game. So people started being curious and started visiting the website. So we saw like thousands and thousands of people visiting our website and checking and sent us messages on Facebook. Like New York Times, for example, contacted me on Facebook. So hi, I'm from New York Times, we're doing an article with you. I was like, is she kidding? I mean, <laughs> so after the regional and the, well, I said the local actually, because six sequence, Wanda and Raul uh, Jour and uh, new circles like that, created the, uh, the hype. Then we had a friend in Future TV, so we did an interview with Future TV. Then we had another friend in MTV, which we did as well. All this led to the international exposure. We had articles on New York Times, on Forbes, on CNBC, on more entertainment, on the next web. All of this created a really, really good, uh, good buzz. So all of those led to a uh, lot and lot and lot of downloads. All of those helps. But the initial thing that's kept people asking about the game <coughs> is the Arabic behavior, the language and the voices, which again triggered the word of mouth, the most important, uh, powerful marketing job. Uh, I would say that from, from my experience and from the people I, I knew, Maybe more than 50% downloaded the game because they were intrigued to know what is this game, as opposed to we are a gamer and we feel that we want to play this game. Because, of course, I admit that the game needs a lot of improvement. It's a very, very small game, but the curiosity we created behind this game is what made the uh, huge number of downloads. I'm showing you here some screenshots. For example, <coughs> our first thing is that we did everything in Arabic the Roman Arabic, the Dutch, the uh, everything. Everything. And you will find some things in the game that are in Arabic and not in English. Now we added English, French, and Russian uh, language for, uh, for the game, but all the initials were really in Arabic. And how we did the levels, as I explained before, each level happens in a different country. For example, this is level one, which is Dubai. If you see this and you are a Dubai local, or 
you, you load them. You want to download it. I mean, if you see a game with the series, come on, you download it. If you see a game with with Rauschen, with uh, I don't know the museum, any other man, you would download it. I was thinking of series. So this is the long level. Uh, the sketches where he, for example, look at the bird. It has the Arabic thing in his head. I don't know if you can notice. And this Arabic bird, he speaks Arabic actually. Say. Uh, it's my, it's my brother recorded this, I, uh, I can't remember what it is, but it's something really Khaliji. And he had no idea what he was talking about. Just, well, well, like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. <laughs> and then those small ads really worked. We, we couldn't hear, we had nothing to lose at this point. So you have to understand that we were not a company. We, we didn't have a lineage we had to protect. Whatever we feel like doing, let's do it. So I love Naman, for example. That went on Facebook a lot. Very uh, Naman, and Naman should have been. I don't know if you know this song, you know what's this song for doing, so we did that. That's not my role, for example, this is my role. So, <laughs> all of those things, these are the things that led to the downloads. <clears throat> so, what did we get behind all of this? A lot of things. First of all, until now we are at 1.3 million downloads. Wow. And when you, when you achieve more than 50 or 100,000 downloads, you're already on the international map. Because 90% of iPhone and iPad and I, iPod, whatever, apps, do not achieve more than 10,000 downloads. That's 90 or 93% or something, but it's, it's, it's really big. So we, we can consider ourselves like maybe one of the few who, uh, who did that. We were number one in all the mineral region, without exception. <coughs> we were number one in France, can you imagine this? We had, I have a French uh, friend, they didn't believe, because I didn't register the, uh, the game and company, I registered on the mining. So I read with the number of and I said, are you kidding me? And number one in France, you know, to be number one in France, you have to do over 25, 30,000 dollars per day. So we're doing that. Belgium, Spain, where the top five in Romania, Russia, Poland, all the eastern, uh, not all, but uh, Romania, Ch Ch I don't know, a couple of more, I, I lost count. We were in the top 10 in China, can you imagine? Uh, we're in the top 100 in the US for maybe five minutes and I'm out. <laughs> and, uh, well, actually more than uh, 30 articles, which we are which really, really proud of. Because when somebody you know, calls you and wants to write about you, it means that you have something important, and we were really, really proud about that. We had over seven TV interviews. We have one next Wednesday, unfortunately. And uh, we had regional recognition. You have very, very, very few people that know what is going on now. I know that it's, it does that, this, this, and that. And this is the, you know, the, uh, the maximum that we, uh, we can ask at this point. But now what, what did we really get behind all of this? The most important thing is we know how to do games now. Because my brother and I really played games. We had all the PlayStations, all the games for PlayStations, the PC only for games, uh, the iPhone, the iPad, anything you can, you can say. But we didn't know how to create a game. <coughs> I come from an advertising marketing background, it comes from a graphic design background. So learning how to do a game was very, very important. And from a consumer perspective, the in-depth understanding of the Arabic user behavior, which is very tricky, this is very, very, very important because this facilitates our work for the future games. Now we know what time they wake up, we know what time they like to play, we know what time they like to uh, download the game, we know what time they like to chat, so we know what to give them now. We have a lot of contacts in, in the media, in the development, uh, we see uh, a lot of contacts, let's say. And a really decent database. We have over 500,000 uh, study database that we have access to right now. And of course, we are more prepared now for our new games. And then eventually, all this led to an investment from RGH. We had $400,000 as an initial investment, initial investment from Resource Group Holding, which is a giant in the telecom industry in Lebanon. And well, again, all this led to creating game books. So now, a couple of months back, we created our first startup, which is called Gamecooks. We are six people now. My brother and I are uh, the founders, and uh, the rest are our team. We have a technical artist, the lead developers, the lead developer, two developers, my brother and I. We are looking forward to include more in the art and the development uh, uh, scene, if anybody knows anybody was interested. So this is our logo for Gamecooks. It's, uh, you know, Resource Group Holding is a big holding, has more than a thousand employees. When we got on board with the investment, uh, they have, I don't know, maybe a hundred person only in marketing. So they said, all right, the next one, now when you start, you have to sit and brainstorm about the brand identity, about colors, you have to be blah, 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 blah. I said, yes, 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 I came to the office. That isn't that. He says, man, this is the logo. I don't want to change it. I said, right, so 
experience as well. In a really pure startup at this point, we rely on student attachment, so we are doing whatever we please, which is excellent. I know that if we succeed in the future, this will not this, but all the fun part might start fading away and we might start getting more serious and more corporate. But at least at this point, we're very happy. And this is the team. So, yeah, well, it's crazy. This is, this is our office, guys. We, we have an office a bit smaller than this, we are six in size. Uh, and as you see, everybody is happy. Everybody is uh, doing what, what they do best, which is uh, nagging <laughs> a lot, and then developing games. So this is our lead developer. The one on the right is the technical artist and the musician. Not very proud of my picture, but this is me. <laughs> this is my brother, smoking straight in the office. You know, you cannot stop him. And this is our uh, four other uh, developer. And the sixth one was not here in this, in this image. He actually lives in Spain, he works uh, overseas, he visits once a month. So this is, this is it basically. Uh, if we, any questions or something we can talk and then I can show you the uh, other game we're working on. I have a question. You said you learned a lot about uh, Arabic user behavior. Can you share some insights? Yeah. Yes. For example, uh, they wake up at night. This is a very small, uh, I wake up, but they are active at night. So for example, targeting the Saudi community Let's say by Facebook ads, if you want to do a Facebook ad to make your product get known, the best time to target it, if you have a small budget, is to do it, for example, in the late afternoon and the evening. In the weekends, for example, on Friday, do not try to get your Saudi because everybody has their sacred routine, which is waking up, settling down, going to the mosque, doing the prayers, then afternoon going for a coffee and then with the family. So this is a very small user behavior. Then uh, the Arabic language, of course, taught us a lot. We had a lot of Arabic mistakes in the game. We try to be uh, Lebanese in our Arabic, like for example, uh, <coughs> Rio Jordan. In Arabic we said, Shalish Salah. And this is, that was very offensive to, to the Arabic, because Shalish means, I don't know, something really bad. So <laughs> we, did, we did something else. So we learned a little bit, if you want, how they like to be addressed, what language needs to be addressed to them. We learned that uh, they don't pay for their apps, they like free stuff. We learned that they are they're really, really, really good PR people. So if you create a small buzz there, it will get four over Saudi in two hours. We identified who are the most influential bloggers in Saudi, who got in contact with them. I'm talking a lot about Saudi because Saudi is the biggest market in terms of uh, mobile gaming and smartphones, actually. Smartphone penetration. Uh, we know a little bit more now uh, what time they play, uh, what do they do, which, uh, which games they do, and it's not really a very long one who taught us which games they like because after we, know, when we got more interested in that, we went in depth study for the Arabic market. Uh, some insights. This, this, this is what came to my mind now, actually. So, this is it. We, we learned really how, how, how they act. How they act. You don't have an Android version? We have one, oh. but it's uh, after, uh, after Virginia, it's a Virginia. Uh, we did what we call a branded version of Virginia. So we took this game and we added a lot of branding in it and we gave it to a client in Saudi. And I will show you now the, uh, the localized version. So instead of going from Dubai to Qatar to, uh, to Jordan to Egypt, we go from Jeddah to Riyadh to Cuba to... So we changed the, the, the graphics, we changed a little bit the uh, sound of the chicken, we recorded voices in Saudi, we did that and sent them. The client is STC, it's a mobile operator in Saudi one of the most important in, in the region. And they wanted to have the local uh, version of that, so they did for Android. Until now we did not launch it for, for Android. Because uh, we don't have really a lot of time for now to do it, but it's definitely on the map. We'll get, uh, we'll get to there uh, later. In Gatebooks now, we focus on iPhone and Android. Oh, so you actually sold the game to the SEC? <coughs> no, it's not really like share. SCC, no, SEC will take the game, and they will launch it personally to their users, and then we'll revenue share whatever they, they price the game, whatever they, uh, they make money from the game, which we'll share it 50 50. And that, was, yeah, that was my next question actually. How do you, how do you make your money? Like, what's your... STC will uh, sell, them, uh, sell the game for so user. For example, let's say they sell $20 for a user. And then. So let's right say, now it's free, right? No, no, it's, it's still not with STC yet. We're, we're finishing it now. Do you mean the this version or what? No, 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 I'm talking about the version. Yeah, 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 the regular one. The, yeah. Yeah. Uh, now we priced it. We have two versions. One uh, okay. normal, one high definition. Oh, okay. One is for two nine nine. One, one nine nine. Okay, so it's not free anymore. I okay. mean, the, the the full version. You you started free. Yeah, you started yeah. two dollars, but but then you you, you continued. Yeah, we shot two dollars. 
not easy. So we did it for free to, to test what will happen for how long did you do it? We did this week, uh, we did it for six months. Six months ago. Yeah. Is it still being downloaded after uh, because it's not free? Uh, yes, the conversion rate is about about one percent. Mm -hmm. So every hundred we download it for free, we're getting one bit. <coughs> you can imagine that if we used to do a thousand dollars per day and we're doing ten even mm -hmm. hundred, twenty, twenty five, so if I'm not mistaken, we have in-game purchases. Yes. Is it work? Uh, we did a... Uh, sorry, that's a very good question. I forgot to mention that. We did a very crucial mistake in that. When you upload your game on, uh, on iTunes, actually, <coughs> if you want to update it at every stage, the user of this game will get a notification that this game is, has an updated level. Mm -hmm. So the user will go and download it. But the user will expect to have something new. I mean, it's normal, right? I mean, you're downloading 20, 30, 40 new men, so we have something new. The crucial mistake we did <coughs> was the testing. We do the in-app purchase. For example, if you uh, don't finish a level, you can buy uh, what we call the rain of fire, and then start running and killing all the chickens, so you can, you know, uh, continue, you can finish the level. What we did, we, pre we, pre we prepared everything, and then when we launched, it turned out that there was one box we didn't tick, and the in-app purchase wasn't uh, available uh, for the end user. So they downloaded this game, you know, the users, they downloaded the new version of the game, but nothing uh, new was there, so we were killed in terms of feedback, in terms of comments, we are really, really killed. We did it again, but then again when we did it, nobody uh, did download it, because when you're a user, you try to lose trust if you don't have an excellent product for this. So this is a crucial mistake we did, and I'm hoping that with our new game, we'll learn a little bit more about the uh, app purchase. But my personal idea is, of course, always go for freemium if you're an independent developer. Free means the game is free, and then you have inside content you can sell. Because doing it twice, like now what you're doing, you can barely compete with anything. Because it is priced. The user will say, why do I need to, you know, to get this game? Whereas I can pay the same amount and get uh, Need for Speed, or, or, or Angry Birds, or the new version of Angry Birds. Or, yeah. Did you include ads in the game? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, why don't you <coughs> I'm against this. I come from an advertising background, I'm very sensitive to ads. Uh, we didn't find the right <coughs> SDK to use for the ads. Uh, all the ads that we didn't do a lot of research when we wanted to do that. So the research we did, all the ads were the small banners that can appear down, you know. First, this will kill us because downstairs, as you will see here now, we have all the weapons. So you select your weapon downstairs, so the ad will be overlaying everything. So it was up to the option. The second one was the top. And on the top, you have the ads and the score and the time and everything. So we didn't want to do that. Uh, I am very sensitive in ads, and I would recommend anybody who wants to include ads in this game to go for the top, top, top premium uh, uh, publishers, advertisers, like, like Tavage or Flurry or people like those, because they will tell you exactly where to put the ads, they will give you the exact SDK to include, they will help you, they will guide you, and your ad, or the ad that will be featured in your game, will not bother the user. Because usually when he's playing, if he sees an ad, it's irritating. We will not really like it. Mm -hmm. It's such a big, huge iPad on that like this. Okay. I still don't understand. If you know that you can include the ad in a, in a proper way without bothering the user, doesn't that uh, increase your revenue? Of course not. not really. I, I thought that. So why don't you do <coughs> it? At that point, with the research we did. Last, right now, instead, uh, instead of do, uh, get, putting it uh, as paid, uh, putting it as free. Right now, actually, as the game is, uh, we don't have really a nice place to put the ad. We didn't do Virgin Now no. in a way to anticipate putting an ad in no. the future. So now we'll have to do a small restructuring. We don't want to touch that. Okay. So in this case, you during the research, what you were looking for, so to uh, to advertise on the application, and you didn't find. I was looking for. Uh, I was a bit naive at this point. I was first looking for ways for me to get sponsors. The game, so for me to get advertisers and to you know to, to, to put their ad in the game, to sell it per month or per six months or something like that. And then I was searching for what I was searching now for for people who will uh, give you their SDK and then you put it in the game, and then you will have a uh, small space that the game will be featured, and they count how many uh, click per uh, how many clicks, how many impressions, and they will pay uh, mm -hmm. for you. So I was searching normally, but I didn't do extended research. And what I found was. Uh, examples like an ad uh, here and that there, and but they don't want to affect the user experience. And again, adding to all of this, the, uh, the idea was to launch it for free, 
get an excellent user experience, and then I should forget to see what happens. So it was this more than anything else. Does the, the sponsorship <coughs> get you anywhere? I didn't try hard. Uh, and at that stage, no, I tried no. But now I'm getting a good vibe around this, uh, especially the big ones. Especially the international ones who wants access to the Middle East. Because you have a lot of brands that have uh, online, that have print, that have uh, outdoor, you know, other line, and other line material in the Middle East, but they don't have mobile yet. Mm -hmm. So when they hear why, so it's a local game, uh, this guy is developing and tell me what time it's open, what time it's clipped, what time it's over. It's, and it's very interesting. So we're getting the uh, vibes now. But this, this will never work now. Because, except if you do a different version for each country, you can control it more. Mm. Because if you want to change the ads, you have to update the game. Or you have to create your own server that changes the ad automatically. And, stuff. and now we cannot afford to do that. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. So you mean uh, the current advertising uh, framework does not does not target for back yet? Anyway, now it. yes. <coughs> well, of course, you have big giants that do that. But he wants to place his own ad. If he gets the sponsors himself, they come to him, and he publishes them on his own game. He needs to build his own ads. For example, to, to, to give you an accurate example, let's say uh, right. So this game, I'm just all about it now. This game is about chicken, right? And you have a big chicken fight. I don't know how chicken. Is. Go to our chicken and say, and I only have 10,000 players that play the game every day. This is the stats, this is an analytics. If I put your ad there, maybe 10,000 people will see it. And at the end of the day, I'll tell you how many people saw it, how many people uh, clicked on it, or, you know. And so I was asking for this guy to give me X dollars for the six months. Yeah. This is the way I was thinking before. Because I come from an advertising background, because I used to work above the line, because I wasn't into more advertising. But then, when you study it more and more, you know that people like Tabjoy, like Fury, they give you excellent analytics and excellent as the case to include. This is very important. So now, the mobile advertising is excellent. Of course, if you're doing a game, you can do a free version with advertising, and you can get a lot of money if it worked. Or you can do a premium version, which is free of ads, with an average chases. Or you can do a version with ads, but if you pay, no more ads. Are you updating the game regularly? Because, no. Because it gets boring after a while, even like Angry Birds or Ninja Chicken and similar games. And okay, you play them for a week, a week and a half, but then if nothing changes, it's really boring, you can jump to the other game. Yeah, I mean, we're not updating yet. Uh, we're planning on it soon, but we are overloaded with what we're doing now. Game code. Yeah, with, uh, well, with, with two games in parallel, we were game codes. So we didn't have a lot of time to do updates for regular games. you have to be careful. So you don't kill your own game, the old game. So, well, so actually, it's not I, I, yeah, I think that every game has, has a life lifespan. Unless you have an excellent idea for updates, don't do updates. Yeah, I mean, we're uh, with the exact same game, different versions with slight difference. And give it space, and give it the... Uh, space is... Uh, Ryu, oh, and give it yeah, slight difference. Yeah, and give it Ryu, and give it the normal one, and give it the original one. Yeah, they, uh, th this is excellent. But the updates they did it, was bigger than the initial game, and they have teams of 50 and 100 and 150. Yeah, they, with Rio, they did it with three other studios. With Season, they did it with another studio. With Space, they did it with NASA. If you can go and do yeah. it with NASA, come on. So, <laughs> when, you, when you talk about updating the game, for me, for example, I want to update the number. It's not about including new uh, levels, it's not about that. It's about including something that will, um, you know, future. Revolutionary. Exactly. For example, now we're tapping, I don't know, next you can shake and something will explode or something like that. And now we don't have the time to do it, we don't have the ideas to do it. Because when you really concentrate on a game, they get lost. Now we're six people, two of us working on a game, and the rest are working on another game. You cannot bother each one with, with another idea, because everyone is so deep in what he's doing, and then that's it, you cannot think about anything else. And we are planning on it. This will be coming for sure, and it, it will include all the other Arabic countries that didn't include, and it will include something really, really nice. When we find that something will update. Now there are uh, no accurate amounts for that. Uh, just the deal with STC, basically the brand version, only STC clients, uh, uh, customers, will have access to it, right? So, uh, who has iPhones, who use STC, will be able to get that as it works? Yeah, well, uh, on the operator, mm -hmm. they have uh, their own shop, their own app shop, they call it. Yeah. If you have an Android version, you can do something and only an STC person will open or only an SSC SIM card can open this uh, this app shop. So yes, only SSC clients can get the Android version. 
or the CPU, or the Windows Mobile, or any other version. But for iPhone, we're putting it on Apple. So anybody can download it. Yeah. But I convinced SEC in a very, very nice way, and they were really happy about that, because they didn't want to do iPhone before. You know, uh, other people can download it who don't want that. Say, guys, I mean, FMO Wiley, competitor of SEC, that was a game full of SEC branding in it. This is a kick-ass for you. Come on. Mm -hmm. So th this is how they do it. So now the iPhone version, everybody can download it in Saudi, but the Android, only uh, SEC clients can. Yeah, it's run so, SEC, not just... Uh, yeah. You'll see, you see just now, and it's everywhere. SEC, and not only the SEC logo, the SEC services, like the 4G, the hacking is something, the, you know, all the SEC things. And the users pay for it, pay for the brand. Well, it's SEC who is launching that. So uh, normally, yes, we have a live version and a full version, and uh, they will pay for that, yes. I hope so. Or else we Thanks, very much. That's fine. And another question, yeah. So what about uh, social media? Are you using it a lot? Are you interacting with the... We start with social media. I mean, we did 1.3 million downloads, and we have 1,000 likers on our page. So that's not really working. The reason is that we didn't have anyone really banned in social media, or we know how to use social media. Uh, so, no, for Britain, no, we didn't interact a lot, but it started. It's very important to have a presence, because when people search for you, they will find you. And maybe those 1,000 likers or 1,200 likers we had on our page, maybe 500 of them, uh, or bloggers, or uh, people with contacts, or a uh, GM somewhere, a CEO somewhere, and the rest are, you know, more friends and people that you know, just get liked by mistake. But uh, for our new games, we are starting a little bit more aggressive. Uh, we have a couple of bucks to send you in there to make, uh, make this more, uh, you know, more likers, more followers on Twitter and these things. And you are searching for somebody who landed on social media actually. Plus, write a bit. Because uh, our press releases, uh, we're doing a blog now, we're doing all these things, and we want somebody to handle all of this plus the social media. But again, social media is very, very, very important. And of course, this, is, this should be the only way of advertising. Back then, we didn't know now. Now we're not going to step by step. How do you, uh, curious, how do you explain the uh, success outside the Middle East? Uh, it, it started, for example, uh, I'll give you a couple of points that happened that, uh, that we thought about. Uh, there were Tayyab.org and another political, I don't know, cafe or something. They wrote about the game. <coughs> and instantly, it got thousands and thousands and thousands of visitors to our website. And then, uh, all those thousands and thousands, divided them by two, they were downloaders. So, I think that the first thing that happened is the Lebanese lobby. The Lebanese, okay. Everybody, uh, everywhere. And then the Arabic lobby. Because back then it was, I think it was the first, if not it was one of the first Arabic games. So when people, th when people think it's an Arabic game, it's not, I'm, I'm curious if I, if I see an Arabic game. I want to see what's, what's that, it's Arabic. He speaks Arabic in the game, I mean, it's, it's really funny for us, right? So uh, I think that this helped. The, the, the articles that were written uh, had triggered the Lebanese lobby, which had triggered the Arabic lobby. And I was explaining that before we came. Before we, came. Uh, we have maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe half a million downloaded that came from outside the region. But a lot of the comments and a lot of the feedback and the emails and the comments on the game itself were in Arabic. If you go to the US mm -hmm. store, you have maybe 200 comments on the game, maybe 80% from them is in Arabic. So this shows you that not only Arabs in the region, but Arabs everywhere download the game because those people read the local media more than we do. Yeah. And they see things happen even more than we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that it's nice in the presentation, but I want to know... No, no it's, it's just fun, we're just going to play it. It's, it's not uh, more awesome. presentation. So, so I want to uh, ask more about how you are going to monetize next uh, <coughs> version with uh, game growth, for example. Yeah. Are you going to work out or what are you going to do exactly? Other than, okay, right now, one from three million, it's, it's a great <coughs> success. So I want to see how you are going to push it forward, especially that you have right now 400k uh, investment, so we're expecting to make uh, a return. Yeah. Uh, this excellent question, by the way. This, this, uh, well, to answer you indirectly, the branded version of STC now it might, might make millions, or it might make, I don't know, one thousand dollars. So the one point three million that we created, we sold it to an operator to grab it for revenue share, but we gave it to an operator. And the plan is, each game we do, to distribute it at least to three different or four different operators. So this would generate more money to us because the operator never gives anything for free. So this was the, the plan from the from the beginning, if you want. Know.
because I come from a political background as well, so I know what politics think and I know the budgets they have. So this was for Bertie. Now we go on to the two games that we're doing. The first one is called Run for Peace. It's a running game over peace. To be a freemium, uh, a freemium model and to be a paid version as well. So the high definition will be paid for iPads mostly. And then the normal version will have a premium. So you can go, you can pay for free. And that's we are trying to excite the player as much as we can to buy things from the store. Like you collect coins and then you want to buy this, it costs you 100 coins, then you're out of coins, you buy 10,000 coins for one dollar, right. for example. So the idea is a freemium model. So the monetizing that we're thinking about now is the freemium model. I hope this works because we didn't uh, test a lot already. So we'll see. <laughs> Time to prove. I have a final question. Sorry for asking you. No. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's uh, okay or not, but uh, what happened between you and your third partner? Why did he leave? Was it the. Uh, we. Uh, we got, no, no, not at all. We're still friends with each other, uh, more of them. But uh, when we started building on now, it started that we need uh, someone to help us. So uh, JC, John Christoph, came, came along, and we developed together. And we were full partners at that moment. We didn't think that it would come to a point where we would get investors and things like that. It was just for fun back then. When we got more serious, we had uh, strategic differences uh, about the strategy of, uh, of the company that we want to create. I saw a lot B2B, business to business, distribution as the main thing that we need to do. And I wanted to allocate X amount in the budget to do that. He saw that only business to consumer is what's best, because then he's one of the differences. They are a lot more, but they are more tiny. But the biggest difference is that I wanted to go research with holding, I wanted to go with other investors. So we hit, we hit the block. And uh, back then, we talked a lot. From my side, I proposed a lot of things. What do you say? From my side, I proposed a lot of things. Like, double the salary, just come more share it. I said the same thing, double do this, do that, because we're really good as a team together. But I didn't want to go with those investors, I didn't want to go with the other investors. So we, we came up, and it turned out to be the, the best way for me because uh, the support we're getting now, and the directions we're getting now, are worth a lot for me. So I think we made the right, right choice. And uh, I think that they are getting an investment as well. I think they signed or something, and you, you will be hearing about it. He has his own company. He has his own game. He is producing. Uh, other games? Yeah, of course. We're producing other games, producing other games. In terms of Birdie, uh, and the co-founder is the co-founder of ourselves. So, so you still share profits on the yeah. game? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, Shaka, shall we uh, we're continue we're to games? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. I can ask more if you want. Go ahead. After, after. <laughs> 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 So really no, no, no. is still not uh, it's not a company that is still We're known as a game. Uh, the company I did with uh, my brother is called Gamecooks, which owns the uh, the name, the brand name, the graphics, and the rest of Birdie. JC uh, launched a company or is launching a company and he owns the source code for that. So we can do whatever we want with our things and whatever we want with this thing. We're fair and square. On the app store, anything that it might make. We just spell them by the uh, It's not making a lot of time, so it's not <coughs> Alright, what I will show you now is the regular version of them and how we uh, turned it into a. Uh, Afterwards, it would be really good to give you comments because we're still in the testing phase now. So 
So I think you're familiar with this. I'm not sure what I think. Measure how much. So you start by uh, the first level, which is Dubai, then Qatar, then Riyadh, then Bahia, Jordan, uh, Lebanon, Egypt, Jazeera, Morocco, and the volcano uh, the final level. So just going to give you a small, uh, here there's an explanation, we're going to skip now. Now you have your weapons master, that's Onko Retarto. Tap, 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 for example. This was the translation that we did. Those are our voices we need to pronounce. Again, she was a man. Sabah Jumaiya, Bayer Sira, you don't have any more weapon, any more ammo for the bombs. So you choose this one. And you have to listen to it. That's fine. That's how it works. This is where you know, regular Now, how do you take this and transform it into uh, a corporate thing? Let me show you just another level quickly. Let's uh, cut that. So, you know, the diagram changes. The weapons are written actually progressively, so you only start, you don't have everything. But I have that. This is a sound of that. Right. Let's go to the Saudi level, to the Saudi version. So the menu became this one. Like Hitler heard, you know, showing that uh, this is Saudi, you want to attack Saudi. You will notice here the branding of uh, STC. You don't have to the branding. If you click on it, it will take you to the app shop of STC. So here you have all the levels of. Actually, the voices, all the voices, and they insist on putting, for example, things like fashion, like Google, at the end, all the voices are done from the client there. They, they, I don't know, they went to a studio, they recorded their voices, they were happy about it, and then they, uh, they gave it So they customized it completely? Uh, completely Saudi now. So they gave it. The coding and everything was given to them? Was, was given to them? No, of course, we just gave them the client app. Okay. And of course, but then they upload to their stores. They don't, it's, it's our property, we're just you know, giving them revenue share. If they pay maybe a lot, we think it was not that uh, So if you choose an order, then... So, for example, here, here, this is the brand that's the brand that's brand that's the 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 but it's more important while playing to get out anyway. I want to continue and continue. Uh, now I'm going to show you uh, the game. Uh, you'll be the first one outside the office that sees uh, what you're doing. And uh, the game concept is a game for peace. So the character will be called uh, Mustafa or Lazif or I don't know what, we didn't decide yet. The game is called Run for Peace. And it's somebody running around from an Arabic uh, We normally tweet about things, but just want to double check. Do you mind if we that you're showing us a new game or the name or anything like that? It's, it's called Run for Peace. Run for Peace. Yeah. So, okay. of course. And uh, no problem. If you it just in terms of guidance, if you tweet about what it does or what the game does, that's fine. That's fine. You, you, you find some information on Facebook, so it's okay. okay. I have a quick question for you, Juan. I know you didn't work on it full time, but the Nama. How much time estimate did it take? For full development? Yeah. Uh, it took full time uh, from Erez three months, mm -hmm. from JC around three months, and from me in part time around six months. So, uh, <coughs> so it's like nine, nine, nine months, nine, nine, nine months. Sorry? It's like nine months, nine months of work. It's like three months of work full time with uh, a team of three people. But then again, the, the game itself is relatively easy to make. Yeah, it's not it doesn't have physics to it, it doesn't have any physics. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, hardcore engines and it's really you need a game. So mm -hmm. it's like nine months of work. Yeah, 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 it's like nine months of work. Y
By the way, I tried it, so just to give a comment for the people. I end up uninstalling the game because it's addictive and I lose <laughs> a lot of time. And you know, sometimes <laughs> I stay awake for, let's say, that's strangely, I don't play for two hours, and, and at the end of the day, I end up uninstalling the game because it's in this part. I don't know, but <laughs> I don't know if that's an advertising or no. Weirdly enough, it's a nice. Uh, <laughs> You so have your brother left your origin job. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, when, when did you leave? Now? When did when you when did you leave your dead job? Actually, the company I used to work for was used to report. So I said them in my same office because my old employer became my investor. Huh? So myself, I stayed. Uh, I said that I left this job and I don't know three four months back because I was happy with the game and didn't want to work anymore. So. Yes. Yeah. It's not after it's how many months from starting the developing the game? Uh, <coughs> for me, I didn't actually leave. I just left uh, three, four months back. Okay. But I stayed. Uh, yeah. Because I still became the investors and we opened uh, game books. But as far as he left, I'm not really sure. Three, four months back. Yeah. So, uh, okay, so the game is you have a character running, you can make him wear anything you want finish dash, uh, palm style, anything. Then he runs from a country to another country to another country, or of course in the region, spreading peace to each country. Uh, the game is far from being finished, so it's used the small glitches, the small flaws, small mistakes. But uh, I will show you a little bit the, uh, the atmosphere of the game. We're doing it using uh, an engine called Coco Studio, and we're using as well Box Studio, which is the physics engine for it. And then, uh, of course, written in an Objective-C for, uh, for iPad and iPhone. And then the next update will be for Android. So here's our <coughs> for piece. This is the guide. I'll start by running a little bit. And then you, know, you can make him wear anything you want. Forget the running most of it, of course. This, this will change because the game now for piece. And the background here will change with the floor removing and so on and so forth. But I just wanted to share whatever we did with you to see you know, our so when you see when you see in the background, you see in the background is this Saudi landmark, this uh, Kingdom Tower or something. You have to jump over all of those because if you don't, you end up getting that. We use a lot of local stuff from the game, like uh, here's the sheep for example, the wolves and how many meet them. Then this is the shisha for example, just flying shisha over here. Uh, not late. Oh! Look at that, I'm so surprised, you know? So... <laughs> what's happening now is totally random, it's only physics. We said, like, uh, the character is 50 kilograms, for example, the camera is 100, the TNT box is 200, for example. If you hit, this will happen, but we don't know exactly what will happen. All the system is done in, in, in a way that if you want to add something, just do the design, we throw in the code to perform directly. So... Let's, let's try a bit to, to see what will happen when we reach another country. So we have couple jumps, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> jump. Yeah. You have taxi drivers, you have uh, the uh, delivery guys. And it gets faster, of course, with time. Each 200 meters you travel, the game will uh, become a little bit more fast. Welcome to Bahrain. It's certain wrong, I know. And then you will see the landmark of Bahrain coming. Like it traveled from, you know, from Saudi to Bahrain. And then, what's the what's the goal of the game? The, the goal. The, the goal of the game. Yeah, the main goal. You have this peace sign that you have to finish. Uh, to finish. Each flag. Like, for example, Saudi, Bahrain, UAE, Qatar, uh, Kuwait. Each one will light a section in this peace sign. I don't know if you can see this on the projector. This is little, this is not, for example. So, your, your achievement is to, uh, your ultimate achievement is to make peace in the Middle East. So, I still have Syria, Lebanon, Egypt, and Nigeria to light, and to make all the peace sign little. Or lit, I don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this is the ultimate goal. I see you're around as well. <laughs> So we just we just went there because we didn't want that comments. Because we're trying to do peace, we're not trying to. to be but isn't it conflicting with your Arab? Is it in purely in English or is it in Arabic? Because it's Arabic. 
But in yeah. English, then not. It will have the English translation, of course. But the name will be in Arabic. You are going to have a Persian version. Sorry? You're not going to have a Persian version. No, no, no. no, no. Okay. Just have Iran there because, okay. let's face it, the most sensitive issues in the region are Saudi and Iran. Okay. So we wanted to bring those two in peace, knowing that in Iran they don't have an app shop, an app store. So they, nobody from Iran will download our game. Okay. I'm not sure about that. But we don't care. We're doing that for spread the peace. Okay. <laughs> So this is the ultimate achievement that we can do. Will there, there, there be a stop between each country or just no, 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 like so continuous. continuous. So here are the achievements. Each one you do will uh, will be there. So of course it's not really done yet. You just have to uh, to make the bottom stand that. But you have over 50 achievements that you can do in the game. So this is as well one of the rules. And actually it's like any any running game, it doesn't have you know, just running, when you try to beat your own score or the score of other people. Okay. Of course, we include the game center in it. So you will see all your friends, what are their scores. And then the most funny thing is the store, actually. You can buy the first one, you can buy this character, you know, some afro with a golden tooth. You can buy the yellow, white, or red dish dash. That's, that's what I'm going to do. Well, actually, that's well. You can, you can uh, get a magnet to get points to you. You can get the gas mask to avoid the smokes or the t-shirt. You can get the revive, so when you die, you just click it and then you revive. You can get the head start, you click it, you travel the first country uh, in speed. Who's designing your games? That is my brother. So here, for example, he's writing a mustache. You change, you remember? The first one was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, the, um, 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 uh, uh, So now, what we call this is a ragdoll, actually. We, we, all the small details, you know, the speed, things like that. We did them like, and they are uh, like this together. So when they when they explode, I don't know which reaction you will make. That's pretty good. It's best. Mm -hmm. At the later stage, each character or each dress will have its own uh, its own special powers. But we will launch before that, of course. The music will change. <laughs> The music, the music will change in each country. Uh, well, this is still to be confirmed. You have to see it from the side. No. Because uh, now we have one, uh, we're exceeding the size now. Uh, we're exceeding the size. Our, our goal is to have it less than uh, 10 million. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ye
have this night. Oh, what a little surprise there. Thanks. <laughs> And then a uh, really cool uh, idea and cool game uh, where to go. Um, my question to you is that uh, the first game uh, was the, the, the whole hype was that it, it was in Arabic and there was uh, there was a really cool part and the original part. Do you think this game would create this uh, the same the same hype or what, or are you, tar are you targeting the same people? I see that you have like uh, you know young faces. I, don't, I think I don't know I, I don't know about the Saudi market. Is it is it? The young people between 16 and 25 that you're targeting is it? Who do you? Actually, the first game, for example, we leveraged a lot on being Arabic, okay. on the voices of Arabic, on these things. This was our punchline. Mm -hmm. We knew that we didn't have a game that can compete worldwide, so we really punched them in the Arabic. We went into the Arabic to propose that Arabic game, not addictive game. Whatever said it's addictive, it's, it's fun, it's nice. It's, it's an Arabic game, try it. Mm -hmm. But what we're uh, what, what we're proposing here is more, really more into the gameplay. And now we're saying this is a really cool game. Try it. In addition, it isn't Arabic. You can understand Arabic. So it's not, it isn't Arabic. Try it. That's, it's a really cool game. What you worked here is really the gameplay. How we do things. Each character took two weeks to, to finish with his goal, with his things, because we wanted a small details. As you see, for example, the one that comes here from, uh, when you reach a country, the post menu, how it comes, how it disappears, the game over, all these things took a lot of time. And we're trying to take our quality a little step further than we're doing. So this was trying to do. Using Arabic is because we thought that the idea is really, really, really cool, and we used it as a platform to go international. For example, the next update after the Android might be running in Europe for peace, running in the US for peace. We just take out all those Arabic landmarks and punch in the two if, and I don't know what that is or the, the, the Tower of Liberty and things like that. So what you are doing, the long distance uh, vision, if the game gets good success, is to make a worldwide game of all these. But we don't want to stop in Europe. We are so we'll understand Arabic more. So that's the Arabic. Then we maximize uh, the efforts, the work. Everybody will work on it. We do a European version, an Asian version, the US version. I don't know. It's interesting because, sorry, I'm, uh, anybody else concerns the questions? Just a comment. It's interesting because your 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 uh, the title is Run for Peace. It's a bit a serious title for the Middle East because it is a serious issue in the Middle East. So somebody who's uh, sensitive to, to peace and all these uh, will, will, will think of it as oh, it must be a you know pretty, not not a funny game, but uh, a game where you contribute to something. Mm -hmm. uh, and and yet it's a very funny game. I'm wondering how you're going to advertise for it. It's going to be interesting to see how. Uh, yes, the the launching campaign will be. Mm -hmm pure human campaign. Okay. So uh, we do really funny, 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 funny ads and then we'll start on social media and we're proposing the game as it's a runny, uh, a run, hilarious game. Okay. So this is the bunch we're doing now. It's, a, it's very addictive, it's a running game and it's hilarious. Check it. Okay. So this is how I propose it. Now I will, uh, I will make you see the uh, trailer. It's great. I'm not sure if anybody saw it on YouTube yet. So Everything we're doing, we're doing it in-house. So our website is in-house, our video is in-house. That's why we're taking a lot of time. Our music is in-house. The technical artist we're having is uh, Musician 12. So when you see his desk, you have a big keyboard in front of it, and then, uh, in front of him, and then you have his PC next to him. So everything we're doing now is in-house. But I think we cannot achieve international standards without uh, um, without going international. So this 
was the teaser of the game. It's not the trailer, it's the teaser. So uh, we did that on YouTube, and then we did a campaign on Facebook. Uh, name this game. <coughs> name our game, because we had no idea what to name it. We wanted, I really wanted to name it Funny Mustafa, but uh, it turned out for uh, religious region, uh, reasons we cannot name uh, Mustafa, because Mustafa is one of the names of the Prophet. So we cannot really take Mustafa a character in the game. So I was lost, I was, I was devastated. I, I cried for, for five days. So uh, <laughs> how to do it now? What, what to name it? So we launched something on Facebook. And uh, we got, surprisingly enough, 1,300 names, almost. Suggestions, because we have now three or 4,000 likers on the page, on, on the game group's page. And we have a lot of suggestions. And then uh, we chose 15 cool names, and then people started voting on which name to take. And the best vote was uh, Now for Peace, so just name it Now for Peace. So the video, this, uh, this was the teaser. We launched the campaign now, so I was surprised when I met SCC and, and Arabnet. They know about the video and they know about the name, and they said, So, well, what did you name it eventually? So they were really excited about that. So, see that Saudi people know it now, so it's, it's really nice. Our next step will be uh, to prepare for the launch, and then we're going to do a teaser. Uh, sorry, not the teaser, a trailer. There's a difference here that you are wondering what, what this is, but it's where it actually describes things from the game, like uh, in the Middle East, a lot of uh, war, a lot of politics, and then you know, uh, Mustafa was really angry. He opened the door, he started running to make a point, then he started jumping, and then you know, he had the shisha flying on his face. And so this is the, the, the addictive slash humor part that you want to target. And after the, uh, the trailer of, of the game, we're going to announce that the game is there, we're going to try to maximize on PR, uh, a very small budget on the Facebook ads, and we'll see what happens. So, uh, I hope I replied to... Uh, yeah, I do. Thank you very much. Ready to ask Caesar about uh, why did you write in Arabic? Uh, we will have one in Arabic. This, um, is, this is the old one, I just have it on my iPad. Okay. Uh, yeah, because I was uh, surprised. Sure. No, no, Arabic is hilarious. It's, it's ten times more fine than, uh, than this one. Uh, was too busy to, to do anything before. Uh, now we just 
but we uh, six seven months back. So when I was when I wanted to create uh, the company I've been done, and then when uh, we split uh, GC and us, we said to Javier to go And then the technical artist uh, as well, we met in a uh, in the lunch in the Netherlands Game Award thingy. And uh, as my brother, Nicolas, the other developer is a friend of my brother, and then the Spanish guy, uh, he's known for many years back. So we didn't really recruit. I mean, we were supporting, they sent us 500 CVs maybe, but we had already what, what we needed. And uh, what they were looking for was not what we wanted. We wanted a game developer. Hala, we don't want only game, but I want a normal developer that we can train. But in the beginning, we didn't have the power to train anyone. We wanted a really game developer who knows code, who knows Unity, who knows all those engines. So they sent us people that don't develop games, or people that know IT, or know things in networking. So we didn't really need that. So all the team now is complex. But from now on, we are, of course, open to a lot of CVs, a lot of talents. So we want to grow step by step. Um, in terms of feedback for the game, um, because you said you could only have one music playing when you start launching, which is this one, right? Uh, uh, no, no, I'm running uh, Yes, uh, of course. Well, I'm changing it. Oh, the music is changing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a bit of, this is the only music that's playing, it might become an... Yeah. Then maybe you can have the option of either to make it off the music and keeping the sound effects. So I have that. I think it's already different. Yeah. The options can be combining the volume between <coughs> effects and... Yeah, we have that you, you include the option of uh, putting your own music. Sorry, just, just a visual. Okay. So, the, the cool thing would be to also uh, play the music of each country in uh, a rap scene. So, uh, that's what we're doing actually. We're taking the theme, yeah. the melody of Mustafa, uh, Mustafa no, and then we're doing it in a uh, localized way. Like you have the like a theme, you have the hold, you have. So each, maybe not in each country, but. Each 30 or 25 seconds, you'll have a different, the same melody and a different instrument. This is okay. what they're trying to have, so you don't get uh, sick of that. And then when you start actually playing, the volume automatic goes really down, and the sound effects go, goes higher. Okay. And Hala, if you're hearing, you're hearing this here. That's when you start. It's the same, so the <laughs> In this build, maybe I don't have it, but uh, in the, uh, the actual build, when you start playing, when 3, to 1, go, the music will, will go a lot yeah, down. You'll still hear it, but it will go a lot, lot, lot down. And now we might, I'm not sure yet if we, will, we can attempt to pronounce, we might for the music to have like a, a bar, like, you know, make a higher or lower, so you can control the music as, uh, as you want. This is uh, the first selling game that the character can slide, but what the character slide then? Can slide? We don't want him to slide. We want him to, to run with his head up. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, most of the other enemy games, like Tatra and uh, Ninja. Tatra Run is 3D. Yeah. Ninja Chica is uh, exactly the same. Uh, Jetpack Joyride is not, for example. This is the uh, game of Happy Big Studios that did for Ninja. Uh, Jetpack Joyride was uh, elected the number one game in 2011. Number one money game. Well, a lot of humans play that game. And it's, it's a guy who's running, he's jumping a lot, he's just leaning in the air, and then coming back. He doesn't have a slide. The slide isn't the, what makes the game or not. Hello. We have some obstacles. I was asking for some startup. For, for many reasons. The first reason, we didn't have time to include that as well. The uh, second reason, we didn't have, we couldn't find all obstacles to go under. So, just jump. Hello, you will have some obstacles like oil on the ground. From the oil factory in Saudi, that you will slip. So you go, whoa, you don't need something. But for you to slide, really. What would be your ideal business model if you, if you had the choice to choose a business model? Well, it's selling it at a very high price. Uh, and, you know, you, you're doing BTV right now, but what would be, what would you prefer doing? Oh, I don't know. Well, I don't know. It is B2C, but. Let's try to get a hey, free I don't mind the choice to I mean, I'm not. We're still a little testing voters now. Uh, okay, I can answer you directly and logically. Nobody wants a client. He will hang, he will uh, be late for you, he will be late on the payment, maybe, uh, he will tell you what it is for that, we have a time of time. So, everybody hates clients. Uh, the idea is to do a light version and then a full version. The light version will have three, four levels, and the full version have all the levels. Light is free. This one is $1 or $2. Okay. And this is the ideal business model. 
In this particular running game, you cannot do that because it has no levels. It's just running. You cannot say you ran 500 meters, you can't stop. You get that feedback. So for this game, the freemium is the best way. Uh, once you are known a little bit, for example, uh, if one of our games hit and the name uh, game cook start mean, meaning something for, for people, then you can have your game in $2 or $3. For example, now, for all the hardcore gamers, anything that comes from Ubisoft, from EA, or from GameDot, tell us, if you don't ask, what is it, you just download it, because you know, this is a company with 4,000 developers that they had titles like uh, FIFA, and like Need for Speed, and like, you know, Assassin's Creed, so you say, of course it's a good, it's a good game. Hello, by far from that. So, uh, now the freemium is, is what it works best, yeah, without b 2 how will people uh, make an association between Virgin Amnam and this one? How will they know that it's from the same developers? Or? This is the problem. Uh, we are co-developers of Virgin Amnam, and we don't want to use Virgin Amnam to leverage on our, uh, our new game. Uh, JC will do the same, I'm sure. Okay. So, they won't. In this game now, we have our other games. So if you click on it, it'll take you to the other game and develop it. Which I cannot really talk about now, it's still very, very on the table, but it will be a factor for Because okay. I read that continuous mode that, for example, what Zynga does a lot, which is very successful, is they always cross promote their games. So you can form a little bit of a city, which find that so cross promotion around Zynga would be like an important thing for like casual, relatively mm -hmm. simpler games. We will we'll do that. This, the, the, the this will be the first. The second one would be cross promoting this one. The graphics start kind of dozens also. It's similar. The graphics, you think? On the design, I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're doing another 3D game. Uh, Which is good. It's, good. it's, it's a yeah. driving game. And the uh, design is way different. Yeah. So, yeah. But say, I mean, many people relate to it like this. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. We have difficulty levels for this one. It gets harder and harder in every new country. Yeah. Right. Well, actually, uh, we, did, uh, we did 60 maps. 20 are easy, 20 medium, 20 hard. Yeah, but it's hard as well. So, yeah, it's really hard. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. 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 So, the first excellence will have only the easy, the second excellence will have the medium, the third excellence you have the hard ones. The hard ones have more obstacles, more electricity things, more, a lot more advanced obstacles if you want. So, uh, with time, if you're running, if you cross X distance, you'd have a lot more obstacles and they are a little bit more tricky. And then, at the same time, the character will be speedy. Each 100 meters it speeds 0.25, so on. eventually in 2000 meters, the castle is running in lower part of the person. So, this is the uh, difficulty increase. There's no levels, so no, it's running in this skip like this one. You had a question? Uh, I want, I first want to ask about, I asked about game design, but not as far as graphic design. As ah, game design, I'm handling yeah. this for. Yeah, yes, but we want to get somebody else. Because it's really, it's, it's, it's a complete art. Yeah. Of course, of course. Well, the, the technical artist we have uh, gives a lot of his feedback on that. That's, uh, he, he's way over his head in his music now, because we're doing a lot of music for the game. And he talks about a lot about the look and feel of the game, or the graphics of the game. He gives us a lot of directions about which colors to use, and how to blend things together. But in terms of gameplay, in terms of game design, uh, I'm handling this for the moment, so that I'm not an expert in game design, so we might be looking for somebody who is an expert at, uh, at a certain stage. Because one, one, one of uh, one of the things that success is that they knew, they knew how to, uh, to design their games, I mean, not uh, as you like, as uh, game mechanics, so they try to understand the user uh, uh, in terms of psychology or the behavior and try to do it uh, in games. Uh, yeah, of course. We, I'm not doing that for the moment. I'm not, I'm not an expert in that. Uh, but you cannot afford them now. To afford a really good game designer who has a track record in any big company who has to pay a lot. And you cannot do that now. Maybe in the future. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you. Thank you.